first phone call came in at 1.19 in the morning, I wasn't that surprised because I knew her friends were out there and they were having fun. Um, but then one didn't tell me what was going on and I could hear in the background the sirens and the screaming and of course that they were trying to get away and, and knowing that they were all okay at that point was a relief, but it's still kind of knowing exactly what's going on and being so far away. Um, and then they hung up and then continued on running to a hotel. Time Jeff and I had been trying to find things on the TV, but it hadn't, it was just happening, so nothing was current on the news. She talked about some of the things she saw and you know how lucky she was and how unfortunate it was for the other people. So from the first call at 119 to the call at 219, exactly, that they were in the car and on the way home. It was a relief, but yet at the same time, we wanted to be able to do something and we couldn't, you know, we're three days drive away and three hour difference, so um, you know, I said to Jeff, what would we be doing right now if it had been a different call? And he said, well, we'd be trying to find a way to get to Las Vegas real quick. So. And then the following week, I went out there. I flew out there to stay with her for four days, and that was, you know, she kind of had a little of that survivor guilt, and um, but at the same time, we were both very grateful that she wasn't one of the victims. Yeah. It definitely makes you look at your relationship with your kids a little differently, and and you appreciate whether they are close or far away, how important they are in your life. So. To get out of the venue, she said, you know, our backs are right to the shooter. We, it could have been us, and she's right. Um, they were just, by the grace of God, they were saved and they were, they made it out okay. And I yeah. credit Jeff for everything that he's taught our kids about what to do in situations. Make yourself aware of every, your surroundings and what do you do. And he's instilled in them that ever since a young age. And so I'm pretty proud of him and proud of that our kids have really listened and paid attention to their dad. <laughs> so we're thankful that she was able to go through that training and while it's unfortunate she had to use it, at least she, she had that knowledge and could use it. I kept, you know, watching the news, of course, and um, seeing how bad it was getting and where it was going. I watched it, like, 24-7. I never stopped watching the news. I just was worried and nervous and calling her and texting her and just... And I chose to definitely bring her home. And because uh, I worry as it is anyway, so I just knew that I had to have her home. So we paid to fly her home and fly her back to Jacksonville. I didn't care. I was getting her here. Dana in Mexico, and they Facebook Tim to ask him if they were okay. And we got that Facebook page, and that's when we found out about the earthquake. And he called and said that. He had to walk home because transportation was down, and it took him two and a half to three hours to get home. And he was—he showed pictures later of the demolition he saw on the way home. It was an awful walk, but when he got there, Myra was okay. They had just a few books off the bookcase, and Myra's brother Omar and Karina, where they live and have church. The front part of their place is okay, but the back part, which is ancient was what was destroyed, tumble in. Have gone to this other village where nobody helped out, and um, they've taken tents to them, they've taken food and provisions for them. Just thankful for family and everybody's healthy, and actually thankful that our kids are doing what, you know, off doing what God wants them to do, even if they're not where we can see them all the time.